doing a demonstration right now on endotracheal suctioning. This is an invasive procedure. We need to make sure uh, that we have a doctor's order for this procedure. Uh, most times an endotracheal patient is in the ICU and you have standing orders available to you for intermittent suctioning if the patient condition warrants it. So before I do any kind of procedure, I want to make sure I assess my patient. I'm going to use my stethoscope to go ahead and auscultate for his breast sounds. And I'm always listening skin to scope. I'm hearing adventitious sounds. I could hear rails. I could hear ronchi. Hear coarse breast sounds. And what I'm looking to see if what I hear compares with what I might see on the monitor. It would be like a low O2 sat, increased heart rate, increased respiratory rate. I might see the patient is a little bit more anxious, a little bit more uh, moving about, uh, showing some agitation. Condition would probably want it to be suctioned, and my doctor's order uh, authorizes me to do that. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I gather my equipment that I need. I need my suction catheter kit, and here comes a container for my saline. I have sterile saline available. It's a sterile procedure. I'll demonstrate sterile technique as I go through this. I also want to make sure I have an oxygen source available to me. The patient is on a ventilator right now. We do need to give supplemental oxygen when we go ahead and we ventilate our patient in between suctioning technique. I need to make sure that my, uh, my vacuum source is available and working. I'm going to take and make sure that when I put pressure over the vacuum tube, it does not go above 120 uh, degrees there, millimeters of mercury uh, for pressure. And I have that ready, set to go. I'm going to go ahead now and get my equipment ready here. I have made sure that everything is appropriate uh, sizing that I need, appropriate kit, and that nothing is, is expired on my equipment. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands. And I'm going to get my equipment ready. Opening up any kind of packaging, making sure you open it up a little for you. This kit comes with a little uh, cup for the saline. I'm going to open it up. Sterile technique. I'm not going to touch the inside. I'm going to go ahead and take my saline. I'm going to go ahead and pour, not touching the fluid box, to the box there. Get my saline ready. And now I can go ahead and open up my catheter kit here. Again, I'm going to do uncrimping of those edges so it doesn't pop back on me. And I'm going to make sure I'm only touching that outer inch to, to support the sterility of the equipment that's inside here. These uh, gloves inside are sterile. They are not labeled right or left, but I am going to glove my dominant hand first. I'm going to reach down and only touch that cuff part that's going to be touching my skin. And on here, I can go ahead and I can glove my dominant hand first. Again, touching only the part that's going to be touching my skin. Now with my dominant hand, I'm going to touch this underneath the cuff here and apply it to my non-dominant hand. Now sterile, sterile, I'll do a fit test. I am now going to touch the sterile catheter here. I'm going to go ahead and just loosely gather around my hand here to uh, get a little bit more flexibility. This hand will now be sterile. This hand is going to become clean. I'm going to take my catheter here and attach it to my, my uh, vacuum source. I'm going to attach the two connectors together. Again, this is still sterile. This is now clean. My hand can go over the top here. Left hand is now clean only. I'm going to test my uh, vacuum source here, make sure that the vacuum source is working appropriately. I'm ready to section a patient, but before I do so, my assistant's going to give my patient some supplemental oxygen. They're going to hyper-oxygenate the patient, do not hyperventilate. She's going to give 100% O2, the oxygen source is on full flush. She's going to give the patient a couple of extra breaths. She's going to remove the patient from the source. And as I go down, I'm going to maintain sterile technique. I'm going to go straight down the ET tube without touching my hand to the tube until I hit resistance or the patient starts to cough. The patient starts to cough, hit resistance, I will pull up a centimeter to two and I will apply intermittent suction as I come up the tube so I don't put their internal mucosa. Sterile technique still. I'm going to clear my tubing and I'm going to reassess my patient. I'm going to check my, oxygen, my monitor here to see if the oxygen saturation has come up, if the heart rate has increased at all with that procedure, which is normal finding, that it's come down to its baseline and that no arrhythmias are present. If I have stimulated any type of arrhythmia, I would want to stop the procedure and get the patient to baseline. 
My oxygen source has uh, come up a little bit. It's not at his normal uh, saturation yet. His uh, condition appears like it would warrant a second return. Again, a patient is going to be uh, removed from the suctioning or from the oxygen source. I'm going to go down again, sterile technique, not touching that tube to my hands. I hit resistance, patient starts to cough, I pull up a centimeter and apply intermittent suction. I like, pull that tubing out. Twisting and turning as I come out. I'm going to go ahead and clear my tubing again. Uh, Kathleen is applying supplemental oxygen. And I'm going to again reassess my patient. I see that he appears to be breathing easier, less agitation. His, looking at the monitor, his O2 sat has returned to baseline now. Heart rate has come back to a baseline level now. Uh, and Kathleen can go ahead and put a patient back on the ventilator source. Now I want to go ahead and assess my patient's oral mucosa to see if it would warrant any kind of uh, section of saliva and secretions inside. Again, same thing. Now it's a clean procedure. This oral is not a sterile cavity. Intermittent section as I uh, go around the oral mucosa here. Again, I'm going to clean my tubing before I end my procedure. I'm going to take and gather that catheter in my hand. I'm going to remove my uh, vacuum so I can go ahead and turn that off for me. And now I'm going to remove my gloves. My tubing is in my dominant hand. I'm going to head and touch dirty to dirty so I'm not touching my skin. I'm going to remove the catheter inside of my glove. Now making a bit inside my hand, I'm going to reach under, pull the gloves over so that I'm not touching any kind of secretions that may contaminate myself. I'm going to put these down, I'm going to throw away my equipment, and I'm going to wash my hands. After I wash my hands, I want to reassess my patient again. I will auscultate for his lung sounds, I will see what his vital signs are, and then I will, of course, document my findings and what I have done.